Hereby call the Iberia Parish Council meeting uh, to order July 24th. It is uh, now 6.01. Mr. Eugene Olivier will lead us in the pledge. Mr. Eugene. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Uh, prayer. We meet here today to serve our community, to use our resources wisely and well. We respect all members of our community fairly <laughs> and to make decisions to promote the common good. We recognize our responsibility to the past and to the future and the rights and the needs of both individuals and community. As trusted servants, we seek blessing on our deliberations and our efforts here today. We, act, we will act wisely and well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Mr. Gonsolan, I pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. Tommy Pollard. Here. Michael Landry. Here. Tommy Landry. Here. Lloyd Brown. Here. Warren Gosheson. Here. Natalie Broussard. Here. Paul, Bruce, uh, Paul Landry. Sorry. Here. Ricky Gosselin. Here. Um, Joe Duga. Here. Eugene Olivier. Here. Brian Napier. Here. Berwick Francis. Marty Traha. Here. Chad Macharin. Here. Okay, we have a quorum, so now we'll look for a motion and a second to go into public comments. I have a motion by Mr. Pollard, a second by Mr. Olivier. Roll call. Okay, now we're in public comments. Uh, public comments, uh, the policy allows for three minutes per person. Item number one, comments from the general public on non-agenda items. Uh, item A, Evangelist Donovan Davis to address the council regarding a street crusade revival focusing on the voting rights of formerly incarcerated prisoners sponsored by a new chapter, Push Coalition. Mr. Davis, come on up to the podium and state your name. Testing. Okay, well, I thank the, uh, the council for the privilege and opportunity to uh, allow me to come up and speak before the council and announce for awareness purposes concerning our street crusade revival uh, for formerly incarcerated uh, persons who have uh, served time. And this is through House Bill 636 that was uh, done by uh, Patricia Smith who's now running for senator. We are also going to have, as a part of the program, I'm trying to get this. You can just let that fall. That's it? Okay, all right. Yeah, and you, you can step back a little. Okay, all right. And uh, we will also have the housing authority who will be in attendance also. Uh, Fred Wesley uh, will be allowed to speak. Uh, Bishop Darren Sofos also in attendance. And um, <clears throat> we have uh, Brunel Tolbert from the NAACP who will speak also from Thibodeau, Homa area, and uh, Norris Henderson of Vote Voices at Experience, a grassroots political organization from 1987 that is geared toward uh, uh, giving and restoring right, voting rights to all those that have been convicted, convicted of felons, amen, and that's coming home. And we will also uh, have a, our normal street crusade revival, and uh, we will have ministers and Christian entertainment and we will also uh, hit the streets after that at about uh, 3 to 6 o'clock. We will hit the streets and we will bring ministry all over the city of New Iberia. So the program is going to be from 11 a.m. to 2. That's how the voting registration drive is going to be the length of that. And then we're going to go from 3 to 6, uh, bringing ministry all over the streets of New Iberia to enhance public safety. So we figure if we you know, work together with the police department, you know, with our community policing, and with uh, bringing ministry all over the streets, we feel that we can uh, help salvage the city and um, and bring holistic change to the city. Amen. That's it. Uh, Good night. Thanks, Mr. Davis. What the, what day was I might have just been there? Oh, all. I mean, uh, the 27, the 27 of this month. That would be this Saturday on the corner of Hopkins and Robertson Street, from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. So it's going to be a, a plethora of events within one event, and uh, all food and drinks uh, will be for free. And we will also have a, 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 a fun jump balloon for the kids. 
So anybody that want to come out, they can bring their kids. And if anybody needs to uh, vote that have been uh, convicted felons, bring them out so that they can, uh, but they would have to have an ID card. That's the only requirement. Amen. Thank you Mr. so Davis, much. Yeah, All right. Thank you very much. Okay, going on to item number two, comments from the general public on agenda items. A, persons being considered for appointment to parish boards and commissions to address the council. Uh, the first person we have is Mr. Ray Freeman and he'll be speaking uh, on the levy board. Okay, uh, I have placed, uh, my name is Ray Freeman. Uh, I've placed my, um, my uh, questionnaire application uh, with, with the clerk and uh, I would like to serve as uh, one of the volunteer members of the Iberia Parish Levy Hurricane and Conservation District. As you know, I served as its executive director for a number of years and um, I have a lot of knowledge that I think I can share with the with, with the group the board in fact has not met for a little more than a year it's kind of dormant right now but it doesn't have the membership necessary to do that so um, it requires two appointments from this body and one appointment each from two other bodies to be able to to be full so um, but I would appreciate your consideration for the appointment and I'll do the best job I can. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Karen, Ms. Karen Bauche, and she's uh, applying for the library board. Good evening. My name is Karen Bauche, and I, I'm a, uh, an employee. Currently, I serve as principal of Laurelville High School. I have submitted an application to serve as a member of the library board. Um, as a lifelong resident of New Iberia, an avid reader, and an educator for now in entering 30 second, 32 years, I see the benefits of libraries not only to children, but to all stakeholders of community in enhancing and enriching the quality of life. So I appreciate your consideration of me for this appointment. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, next up, we have Mr. Blair Bear, and he's uh, applying for the Katiana Fairgrounds Commission. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen of the council. Hope you all know me. Uh, for the record, my name is Blair Abair, and I think you have received my application. I've served Iberia Parish for the past 22 years as either the 4-H agent or county agent. And in that capacity, I've had the opportunity to serve and assist at the Sugar Arena, um, most recently as an ex-officio member representing the Iberia Extension Office of the LSU Ag Center. I think I have the knowledge and the experience uh, to serve in this capacity, I would appreciate your support, and I hope you allow me to continue to serve in this capacity, and I will continue to do my best to make sure uh, things go as well as possible over at the Sugar Arena. Thank you. Any questions? No. Nope. We're good to go. Thank you, Mr. Hebert. Uh Is there any, anyone else in the audience that is applying for a board or commission that maybe hadn't filled out the uh, form? Okay, seeing none, I'll look for a motion and a second to go back in the regular session. I have a motion by Mr. Gashasan and a second by Ms. Broussard. Roll call. Okay, we're now back in regular session. Reports finance and administrative, we have none. Reports parish and other governmental, we have none. Public works reports, item number one, public works department report for closed worked orders dated June 24th to 28th, July 1st to 5th and 8th to 12th, 2019 were in your packets. Item number two, Public Works Department report for open work orders dated July 16th, 2019. That was also in your packet. Uh, special business, item number one, executive session pursuit to LARS 4217-2 regarding litigation entitled Rodney Leger versus Iberia Parish Government Civil Action Number 617-CV-01927, United States District Court, Western District of Louisiana, Lafayette Division, as removed from the 16th Judicial District Court Division G, Docket 130773, for discussion, Warren P. Gashisan. At this time, I'll take a motion and a second to go into executive. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard and a second by Mr. Brown. Roll call. Okay, that motion passes. Um, at this time, we're going to go ahead and clear the uh, chambers and we'll go into executive session and um, we'll notify y'all when we're going to be back.
Okay, we're uh, we're back now. We're going to go ahead and uh, uh, I got a motion by Mr. Gonsalay, a second by Tommy Landry to uh, come out of the executive and go to regular session. Roll call. <clears throat> Just push it, yeah, just push it. Okay, that motion passes. We're now back in regular session. At this time, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, let Mr. Andy Sheely give us a little update. Mr. Chairman, I'd, I'd just like the minutes to reflect that uh, we've been in executive session now for approximately an hour. Uh, at which time we discussed the matter that's uh, on the board in front of you. Uh, no action was taken, no vote was taken. It was simply uh, 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 an attempt to provide information uh, to you regarding that litigation. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sheely. Uh, before we go on to council member announcements, uh, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and jump to summary 501 and um, so we can uh, get Mr. Jason out of here. So summary number 501, introduced by the Hospital Service District Number 1, an ordinance authorizing the issuance by the Parish of Iberia, State of Louisiana, the insurance of $11 million of hospital revenue bond series number 2019, prescribing the form, fixing the details, and providing for the rights of the owners of the bonds, providing for the payment of the principal, and the interests of the bonds accepting an offer for the purchase of the bonds entering into certain covenants and agreements in connection with the security and payment of the bonds authorizing the agreement of the paying agent and providing for other matters in connection thereof i uh, need a motion and a second i have a motion by mr gonsalam a second by Ms. broussard mr gonsalam Oh, I stand corrected. 5,001. Okay. Okay. And uh, Ms. Broussard. Wait. Okay. Um, I have Mr. Jason at the speaker. Does anybody have any questions uh, about this? We might have went over it. Um, any concerns about this, this motion? Okay. Uh, Mr. Olivier. It is a revenue bond, right? Our parish uh, obligation of parish is basically nil. Exactly right. Uh, the bonds are expressly secured and paid solely out of the re revenues produced by Iberia Medical Center, and um, it's uh, very clear to both the purchaser and and to and throughout the documentation. So. Okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Duga. Oh uh, yes, I know we've got a listing of what that money was going to be spent for, but you, can you kind of give us a brief overview? I, I can, and Councilman, I will. Uh, I will plead uh, your forgiveness because I walked off and left that piece of paper sitting on my desk but uh, for starters there's a significant portion that's going to deferred maintenance items like roofing HVAC systems etc that are desperately needed to maintain the hospital both campuses in pri in good working condition there's also a number of what we would call revenue producing measures that are going to be uh, those that will continue to increase the revenue of the hospital over the coming years uh, this year uh, they're not going to well, they're, they're going to be close to topping $100 million in revenues this year if they don't quite get there. And that's, that's a qu quite a growth pattern that they've been on uh, for the last few years. And these measures, when they're put in place, will help them continue to grow and continue to put money back into the facilities there. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Okay, um, seeing no further uh, discussion. Okay, uh, Mr. Tommy Landry. Okay. Can I answer this tonight? But those bonds have already been committed for, have they not? As far as purchase. Oh, yes. We actually. Um, and a very attractive rate. I'll, I'll be glad to comment on that okay. if, if right. I may. Um, uh, this has been a result of about a two-month process with us and with the administration of the medical center and with your uh, financial advisor government consultants we had meetings with a number of uh, banking institutions uh, located in the state uh, and uh, asked them to submit their best bids there were a number of bids submitted albeit only by two particular banks uh, the winning bid per, uh, selected by the medical center administration was by Iberia Bank so here locally it's a 15-year fixed rate, uh, meaning it won't change, and it's a 3.15%. So 15-year fixed, 3.15%. Um, when we started the process, we were hoping to be under four. 
so to be able to get that rate don't tell Iberia Bank we said that but when we started uh, you know to get that rate we're very very pleased with where this turned out so. um, Tommy Landry there's no one from the hospital here tonight uh, no, sir. No, but they uh, they have their meeting tomorrow night, and and as is custom, they will actually uh, uh, adopt a supplemental or secondary resolution, just approving the uh, the award of the bids that you're actually doing tonight. As you remember, these are Parish of Iberia Hospital revenue bonds, not Iberia Medical Center bonds. So they'll adopt a resolution, not only uh, uh, accepting your award of the bid, they'll also approve all of the covenants and terms contained within the ordinance that you're approving tonight. Okay, no further discussion. Roll call. Okay, that motion passes. We'll Thank move you. Moving back up to council member announcements. Anybody in the council? Mr. Olivier? I'd like to invite everyone to the Grand Avenue Community Development. My 11th annual town hall meeting, District 10. Thursday, August the 1st, 2019. Uh, at 6.30 at Mon Ami, Grand Mary, Louisiana, uh, on Highway 90. Uh, Haley Booley, the administra administrator of the Mason Tesh Nursing Center of Generate, will be our guest speaker, along with other uh, public officials, Blake Miguez, uh, Fred Mills, as well as our Paris President, Larry Richard, and, our, and Ms. Lachele from the school board also will be there. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Napier. Uh, I'd like to uh, congratulate our own Mr. Iberia from District 8, uh, Mr. Ricky Gosselin, that was chosen uh, uh, from the uh, Trucane Festival Association. Congratulations, Mr. Gosselin, for being Mr. Iberia. Congratulations. Uh, next up, Tommy Landry. Yeah, I'd like to give a shout out to the Recreation Department and uh, the uh, job that they're doing out at uh, the Barbiera. That place is really turned around. I don't know if y'all have been out there. I spent a couple of uh, weekend days out there and that, that facility has been really, you know, turned around and doing well and uh, hopefully, you know, as the economy continues to inch up, inch up that it's going to continue to do well. But uh, let me carry it on to those people at Recreation because they, they've done a great job out there cleaning it up. Talk about maintenance to the whole, whole gamble. Uh, next up, Mr. Gonsalam, Mr. Iberia. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you again, Brian. But uh, the reason I wanted to uh, make a comment is that myself and correct me if I'm wrong. August the 12th, myself and Paul Andrew will be having a neighborhood watch. We have invited multiple candidates for the election year to come address our our neighborhood watch group. And uh, if I miss, if we missed anybody, please feel to contact me and Paul. But uh, come out and listen to uh, who's going to be running in specific positions next year and ask some questions. August the 12th, 6 o'clock. Where? Uh, North Lewis Elementary. That's it. Um, and and then on September 9th, we'll have a follow-up. That's right, follow -up. We probably won't be able to have everybody. But, um, yeah, go ahead, Mr. Napier. If you don't mind. Yeah. Um, just to... Larry and Herman and all of the administration and everybody that uh, that worked really hard, uh, a lot of sleepless nights uh, when, when Barry came strolling into town. So uh, hats off to all the administration. I know y'all in public works and everybody that uh, that did what they did to uh, keep us safe. So Thank you. hats off to all of y'all. I didn't want to, to go by without saying Thank that. You. And uh, I'll go last, uh, just to remind the administration and the council that the Region 3 meeting is held by St. Mary Parish this year. So um, it'll be on Thursday, August 15th at the Petroleum Club in Morgan City. It's a real good time to go out there. They bring up some um, uh, resolutions and things to bring to, the, uh, to, to Baton Rouge and to the other meetings. And uh, it's a good time to meet a lot of other people and get some ideas on how they do things. Okay. Um, no further announcements. We're going to parish president announcements. Mr. Richard. There's a lot going on, but due to time, I'm not going to go through everything. Uh, from, the last, from the works report, um, from the last meeting, we had recalled inspections done in District 10, trees down in various districts throughout the parish. Field drainage work done in District 3, 8, 13, 
roadside drains work done in District 13 and 14. Uh, flood, uh, flood debris picked up all over the parish. Uh, grading roads in District 14, road paths in District 8, 10, 12, 13, and 14. Shoulder work in District 8. I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, sales tax collection uh, with EDD fund collection for June increased by 56.40%. Uh, the average increase over the last six months is 62.22% over the last six months. Uh, garbage increase, which is a half cents collection in the rural area of Iberia Parish, increased by 34.69%. Over the last six months, that increase is 33.51. Mosquito control, the quarter cent sales tax, the quarter cents tax, uh, over the, for the month of June, increased by 15.84%. Average increase for, this, for six months is 14.21%. Recreation, uh, quarter cents tax, increased by 26.56%. Increase over the last six months is 23.02%. The occupancy tax, which is a four cents tax on hotel rooms and camping facilities, decreased by 16.29%. However, over the last six months, it had an average increase of um, uh, 5.42 percent so as you can tell our taxes are starting to come back and that's a good thing for Iberia Parish um, <clears throat> litter abatement program uh, July 20th we picked up 51 bags of trash on Ozan Road alone um, that's a lot of trash uh, that was but it was a good deal and that's what the uh, program is all about Hurricane Barry um, to you Brian and Marty and everyone else I can't even say enough about the staff of Iberia Parish that we have. Uh, and I don't want to miss anyone, but I'm certainly going to try to start talking about some of the work that was actually done in Iberia Parish. As you know, our public works uh, department is down, you know, from roughly 60 people to maybe 36 people. And we, these guys were, it was just unbelievable how much work they did getting prepared uh, for Hurricane Barry and what they have done since then. However, it's, it's a bit more than public works. We had a lot of council members, that, council members that was involved in what was going on as well. I wanna say thank you to you, Tommy, for always being there with your transportation and to make it easy for us because when we're trying to figure out if we have to shelter people, how we're gonna get them, uh, where they gotta go, and, and I really appreciate everything you've done and you've been doing that since 2016 when we got here. Every time I call for something as far as transportation, you always had to bail us out. Uh, the Department of Health and Hospital, the National Guards, the Louisiana State Police, CERT, um, Lowe's Department, uh, Lowe's Lumber Yard, where they let us actually set up camp for, excuse me, uh, Lowe's Lumber Yard, where they uh, let us set up. Uh, that was a big deal. Walmart donating things for CERT. Um, Super One, the hospital, uh, you know, it, it, it was just so many people that did so many things. And uh, one thing I want to talk about is um, power outages in Iberia Parish. We had 30,000 people out of power. And in a matter of a few days, for the most part, everyone was back up, except uh, if they lived in a remote area where it could have been one or two people on that particular street. So a big deal for Clico and for Entergy. And listen, I don't want to leave anyone out. You know, Iberia Reynolds, I probably shouldn't have started naming. I guess I'm gonna try do a little blanket right here. I want to thank everyone that helped Iberia Parish <coughs> in in the time when we needed it. Uh, we have a lot that we're gonna be discussing tonight, and I want to yield some of my time to uh, to give you guys a little bit more information on what we started talking about in May. Uh, the Iberia Parish Go Mesa plan, where we're uh, talking about trying to follow um, CPRA in the in the master plan that they have. So. If, Michael Pugh is around here. Mike, I would really like you to. Mr. Richard, uh, before you, can. before Mike starts, Mr. Gosson. Yes, sir. Just a question I want to ask before the meeting. How much obstruction we have in drainage oh. from, I mean, I'm asking, I, I, yeah. I've seen a little bit, but. I'm sorry, I should have brought that one up as well. You're going to, later on in this meeting, uh, I'm going to be asking the parish council for, for funds for, um, for debris pickup in our barrier parish. We've been negotiating um, a lot over the last week and a half. Uh, we're, we're gonna be trying to and, and uh, have a burn site or burn permit in Iberia Parish. 
Uh, we spoke to the Department of Trans Department of um, DEQ today, and uh, we look. It's pretty promising that we're going to get that. All of our debris is going to be picked up if everything works out um, by um, waste connection. We're going to get a, an additional rate. Um, I guess I can legally say all of this right now. We're going to get an additional rate of a dollar and seventy-four cents to pick up our debris in Iberia Parish. So when you for every resident in Iberia Parish. So when you talk about how much we're going to pay, it's going to be a dollar seventy-four for fourteen thousand. 147 people so you're talking 24,600 and something dollars for our debris parish wide parish wide uh, so we, we we have a uh, very good negotiations that took place between Iberia Parish and Waits Connection that's a big deal for Iberia Parish we're looking to get that started perhaps on Monday but prior to getting that started, of course, I need to get press release out and make everyone aware of what we're doing. <coughs> we're going to have a start date and an end date. So we're not going to do this forever. Uh, I want to say that this particular deal is going to be for all of our Berry Parish, including Generet. Generet, the mayor of Generet is here, Carol Bourgeois. And listen, we've been working extremely close on everything that's, uh, that we're doing as far as Barry. I mean, we was out in, in, in Generet removing trees for the mayor. You was there, Brian. I don't know if it was a week and a half ago, whenever it was. It seemed like it was a couple of days ago, but it could have been a week ago. I don't know when it was. Um, so we're doing whatever we have to do to work with any municipality in Iberia Parish. I think that's very important that we, we try to work to, together and collaborate and do whatever it is. Hopefully I answered your question. Yeah. We still have some things that we need to do uh, before, we, um, before we start that process. But as of now, we're looking to move forward um, starting on Monday. Yeah, that's, picking that's I'm just getting some questions. I'm tonight. trying to answer them. And time. also tonight, uh, something else you're going to have is um, in order to get this done, of course, that fund that's going to be paid through the Solid Waste Fund, but I want to make sure that we create a separate line item for Hurricane Barry. Still be solid waste, but I want to create a separate line item from the Her from Her for Hurricane Barry. So that's going to be going to you later on as well. So anyway, with that said, Mike, if you can give a little report can. Um, as far as where we're at right now. So we delivered the presentation to you guys in May. Um, I'm not going to go through all of that again, but just to refresh your memory, <clears throat> we talked about the source of the funding for this plan, the Go Mesa Act, Congress passed, um, the regulations on how that money can be spent, types of projects that qualify. We walked you guys through the process of developing the criteria that we were going to use to select the projects, um, the benefits they provided, and how, as this plan was being developed, um, it was going to be done in concert with CPRA's master plan, um, which gives you maximum ability to get matching funds. Um, <clears throat> and we laid out a preliminary schedule and a preliminary cost metric. What you have in front of you tonight is just the next generation of that. Um, we've had two months. We've gathered more information. We've advanced the ball further down the road. I was a little hesitant to give you this schedule because it has so much detail, but it's, it's where it needs to be. Uh, we've been through it for the last couple months, working with the administration to right size it. Um, just to refresh your memory, there's three projects. Uh, it's three flood control structures on People's Cooley, Segura Road East, and the Jefferson Canal. All three projects, all three structures are going to be similar in size in nature and provide similar benefit. Um, we talked about the benefits that they would provide, but just to give you a little idea on Barry, um, it was the perfect storm in a sense of it, I, it impacted the parish perfectly. You had north wind blowing for almost 48 hours. The tide gauge in Vermilion Bay was down to as low as a negative 2.3 before you had the south wind and the surge come up. And the surge peaked at a plus six or seven. So you had about a nine foot tide surge swing but that's three foot of water you didn't have to deal with that you would have had to deal with had you had a south wind. That's exactly how these structures are going to work. Um, granted, you're only putting three of them in. You're not putting the whole system in. But because they, 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 uh, they provide utility, which utility means the projects can stand alone. They offer the benefit by themselves. Um, and these three uh, sub-basins, you would have had that level of benefit had these structures been in place. Now, you didn't need them because the north wind acted as the structure. Um, but that just goes into the, the benefits that they provide. From a scheduling perspective, um, the plan is to start now. Um, 
<clears throat> and begin with People's Cooley, advance the design, and then begin design on Seguri Road East and then on Jefferson Canal. And then you can see that construction on People's Cooley isn't slated to start till September of next year. Now, that seems like a long time. It can happen a whole lot faster. We can have it designed in three months. The problem is the permitting process. Um, these, these projects require a 404 permit that has to go through the state, which that won't be the problem, it has to go through the Corps of Engineers. Um, right now, we have as many as 25 active permits on projects all over the state, and the average time to turn a permit around is six months plus. These are simple permits. So the idea and the strategy is, is to get the first one in a permitting, work out the details with the core, answer the questions, and it should make the second two go a lot faster. So there's a big fat red line right in the middle of all three schedules that's pushing everything out. If we can get that from 270 days to four months, this can be done a lot faster. Um, but at some point in time in the next 24 months, all three of these projects will be going at the same time. Um, part of what's governing is not just the permitting process, it's money. Um, and if you flip to that second page, it shows you the, uh, the funding plan. And we went through this the last time, we kind of hit it high level, but if you look at the 2007 to 2018, that's the money that the parish has received from Go Mesa <clears throat> through 18. You got to check this past April for $994,000, so you have roughly $2 million in your fund balance right now. The way the projects are scheduled, that last line in that funding plan is the fund balance. You always want to keep a positive balance in your funding balance. Um, and it shows that over the course of the five years, when all the projects are complete, you'll be left with roughly $1.3 in your funding balance. That's there for overruns, change orders, but it's hopefully there for operation and maintenance or future projects. There you go. Um, the second one shows how the funds will be spent per project per year. And you can see on that uh, last column of the expenditure plans, there's no expenditures in 2023 because all the projects are finished, but you have to wait for your fund to replenish that year before you can move forward. Um, the strategy that the administration and President Richard has been working with uh, the state on is as we advance the first project in the construction, second projects in design, and the state has agreed to this verbally, that they would step up to the table and start funding some of this. So this plan may be revised in 18 months because CPRA has just said, we'll take the construction of the second two. Well, you have another $3 million, so you can start another project. Um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Okay, uh, Mr. Gonsolin has a question. Mike. Yes. Is there anything that we can do from a governmental agency to shorten that core time frame? You know, you can, I mean, that there's some ways of contacting or, or offering resolutions or what we can do. Because I know in any project, granny project, the core is the issue. Mm -hmm. And it's no, there's nothing new. But, I mean, it seems That's like the there's something we can Larry do. That's the first thing Larry said when we showed him the schedule. Yeah. Well, uh, something we can do to shorten that time frame. I mean, I'm willing yeah. to work for it. Okay, good. We, if I can. I mean, it doesn't matter. Right. We're in this Actually, um, working with CPRA and contacting uh, Congressman Higgins and our other delegate or delegation, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Okay. Just for your information, Ricky, uh, I don't know, it could have been maybe last Thursday or Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, I met with the Corps. In fact, I flew over uh, Iberia Parish, Vermillion Parish, St. Mary Parish with, um, you know, with Clay Higgins people, Congressman Higgins people, and we talked about exactly this. You know, when we start this process of the council uh, allows, how can we work to start <laughs> expediting these permits that we have in, in the parish? And it's more than just these permits. You know, you're talking about like Park Purdue. We got some work that we need to do around Park Purdue, but we can't really do it because we still have sil uh, where it's silted up at um, at Lake Pinier. So the core is aware of the things that's going on in our very parish. Um, you get these commitments, if, and I don't want to be disrespectful, but we get these commitments, but it's just things don't happen. It's kind of slow. So with our federal delegation, hopefully moving forward to help. Uh, we can speed that up a little bit. Well, and I think it's it's a twofold strategy, right? So you, you get in early and you have what's called a pre-application meeting, which we're looking to That's do right. in the next 60 days. Right. And you give them the information, make sure they know what you're doing and try to make friends out of them. Yes. But at some point in time when they aren't moving fast enough, yes. And, and that's the frustration of the, of the taxpayer is that, you know, the bureaucrats involved, they just, they want to, they want to move fast and it just, it Gee, doesn't. frustrates nobody more you than know, me. And, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. But thank you. Yeah. Well, if there's anything we can do, I'm sure we'd step live and let us know. I certainly will. Yes. 
Okay, we have no other comments. Anything else you? Uh, one other thing I want to pass okay. on to the council is that um, Royal Engineers is the company that we select based on an RFQ that was actually done uh, with several companies involved, and it was scored, and Royal had the best score, so that's why we're using Royal. And I, I know you guys have done a lot of projects in the past, but I just wanted to make the council aware of <coughs> why we're doing what we're doing. Um, so with that said, I think it's time for us to move on to something else. Okay, now we'll move on to consent agenda items for public hearings, minutes, regular meetings for July 10th, 2019. Summary number 114, introduced by Fire Protection District Number 1, a resolution declaring an engine 301, a 1987 international pumper as surplus property and further authorizing the transfer of said vehicle and ownership to the City of Generet and the Generet Volunteer Fire Department in exchange for the City of Generet and the Generet Volunteer Fire Department purchasing three sets of bunker gear for the Fire Protection District Number One, and all is requested by the Fire Protection District Number One. I have a motion by Mr. Gonsolin. Oh, wait a minute. Summary Number 115, introduced by the Parish President, a resolution of appreciation of congratulations to Ms. Teresa Cheryl Muto, Accounting Technician Number Two with Iberia Parish Government upon her retirement from the parish with 14 years of service. Is there any other consent agenda items that anyone is interested in pulling? Hearing none, uh, we'll ask for, uh, I have a motion by Mr. Gonsolin, a second by Mr. Olivier. Mr. Gonsolin? No Mr. Olivier? No Mr. Brown? No further discussion, roll call. Okay, those items pass. Ordinances introduced by public hearing and adoption. Summary number 5,000 introduced by the Clerk of the Council and ordinance amending Chapter 2, Section 2-2 2 and 2-2.1 to amend the closure day and time for council and committee agendas due to the official journal discontinuing publication of the Monday edition in order to remain in compliance with publication requirements of Iberia Parish Home Road Charter. Have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Michael Landry. Ms. Broussard? Wait. Mr. Landry? Wait. No further discussion. Roll call. And motion passes. Moving on to resolution, summary number 103, <coughs> introduced by Chad Montran, District 14, a resolution amending the 2019 Economic Development District Number 1 fund budget in the amount up to 16000 to provide for the funding of the extension of gas lines by Atmos Energy at Highway 90 and South Freetown Road, the old air gas facility, all to be funded from the fund balance previous years. I have a motion by Mr. Monteran, a second by Mr. Trahan. Mr. Monteran. Uh, I, I think it's pretty much So we have a, a, an option to help a local business and any future businesses that develop in that area. Uh, I think it's win-win. It's what the tip's designed for, and I appreciate y'all's support. Okay, Mr. Trahan. Wait. Mr. Shealy. Uh, uh, amend that to also allow the parish president to sign any type of cooperative endeavor agreement necessary to get that started <clears throat> would, would be one thing uh, and the second thing is I, I just it, it's somewhat misleading and, and I think uh, Mr. Macharan hit it on it this is not an extension to a particular entity it's an extension of your line that will allow that entity and others in the future to tie into it so it, it it will also benefit anybody else farther down <laughs> down the line. Okay, so um, you're suggesting that we amend this resolution? Yeah, just to allow <clears throat> Mr. Richard to sign any uh, cooperative endeavor agreement that might be necessary for Atmos okay. to finish that. Okay, so um, the motion, Mr. Matra, yeah. are you okay with that? The yes, second, sir. Mr. Yes. Trahan? Definitely. Okay, no further discussion, roll call. <clears throat> and motion passes. Summary number 116, introduced by the Clerk of the Council, a resolution appointing Mr. Blair Abair to the Acadiana Fairgrounds Commission representing the county agent's office as the ex facto member for the five-year term to fill the vacancy created by the expiration of the term from Mr. Blair Abair, whose term expires on September 24th, 2019. Have a motion by Mr. Gonsolin, a second by Ms. Broussard. Mr. Gonsolin. I wait. Ms. Broussard. Wait. Mr. Napier. Okay, no further discussion. Roll call. 
That motion passes. Uh, summary number 117, a resolution introduced by the Clerk of the Council, a resolution accepting a proposal from Geographical Planning and Demographic Services for the merger of precincts in preparation for the 2020 census to make appropriate action as necessary. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard and a second by, uh, by Michael Landry. Ms. Broussard. Wait. Michael Landry. Wait. Okay, we have uh, our demographic man up here. Does anybody have any questions about what we're doing? This is... Mike Hefner, Geographic Planning Demographic Services. Mr. Chairman, thank you. Members of Council, good seeing you again. This is all part of the preparation for the 2020 Census and staging things for the 2021 reapportionment that we'll be starting. Uh, we've been working with the state, uh, with the various parishes, the legislature allowed us now to uh, be able to uh, get rid of a lot of these small precincts that tend to carry on time and time again, adds expense. They're trying to reduce the number of precincts statewide. It always helps when the parish has fewer precincts. So I've been working with the registrar, getting an idea of what we can do. And uh, right now you have 64 precincts. I'm just working on a little bit of preparation for the meeting tonight. And I'm down to like 37 precincts right now. Now obviously we're gonna add some precincts when we reapportion, but I'm hoping that the net amount is gonna be fewer than what you have right now. Otherwise, we would be starting at 64 and probably end up creating some additional ones. Uh, so this is good for the parish. It's going to save you money in the long run, and uh, it's going to help the state out as well. And we'll be sending these over to the state for their approval once we finish with it and you approve these precincts. And then it'll be submitted to the Census Bureau, and they'll collect the census data for those precincts. So we'll be ready to roll in February or March of 2021. This election cycle will be your last election cycle in your current districts, by the way. Next time you all run. Going to be in new districts. Any questions? Mr. Olivier? Yeah, do you have any preliminary data right now on the population? The parish and geographic location and stuff like that? Any current? The, only, the past census? No, the only thing that we're getting right now with is the estimates from the American Community Survey, and they're mm -hmm. basically by parish and by municipality. Nothing down at the precinct level precinct? or district okay. level. All right, thank you. And they're all estimates, too. So. All right. The main thing, though, as leaders in the parish, and you'll be hearing this as we go on closer to April 2020, is please encourage everybody to answer this census form, even if it's just how many people live in the household. They don't want to do anything else. At least the number of people in the household, at the very least. That at least gets them counted. It's going to help with uh, revenue sharing, grants, and all those things, as well as adequate, <coughs> proper representation when it comes to reapportionment. Okay, no further discussion. Roll call. That motion passes. Summary number 118 introduced by the Clerk of the Council, a resolution expressing support and requesting that the State of Louisiana and Board of Commerce honor the industrial tax exempt contract with Bagwell Energy Services Incorporated 20180323 ITE. Note term of the exemption needs to be determined during the discussion of this item. I have a motion by Mr. Napier, a second by Ms. Mr. Trump. Mr. Napier. Uh, I'm sure that this would, would this <coughs> Well, they fall under the newer uh, regulations, which would be for uh, five years at 80 percent and uh, the potential to renew for five years at 80 percent. Uh, and what this resolution also does is it instructs the state that uh, by granting this, you also want some input, and that input is that you get the monthly, the, the yearly reports of how much they spent, uh, the uh, jobs that are created, and the payroll, uh, and and if they are less than 10 percent, uh, or if there's a 10 percent reduction, then you have the right to renegotiate. But they've done. They've already added a, a ton of jobs al already, uh, and and this is one that I think uh, uh, maybe the school board has, I believe, has already uh, maybe granted. Uh, so mm -hmm. uh, I, I looked over it and I'm satisfied with the resolution until I work with Brenda and getting ready. Miss, sure, no, that's good, uh, Mr. Traha. I'm good. That okay. 
Mr. Rogers, you have any questions? I uh, just uh, here, like I say, good evening, and uh, uh, here as the CEO of Bagwell Energy. If you got any questions, I'm sure Reuben Wrangler or I could answer them. So if you got any questions concerning the I think project. we're impressed with your operation enough, and uh, we're ready for you to go ahead and expand and hire more people. Well, thank you. So. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes, sir. Thanks we're ready. Back. Yeah, yeah. Thank, thank you very you. much. <clears throat> um, it was uh, five years at 80 percent, and the second five years was at 80 percent also, I think. Right. Yes. Okay. Okay. No further discussion. Roll call. Tommy. <coughs> And that motion passes. Summary number 119, introduced by Regional Planning Commission, a resolution granting preliminary approval to Belmont Plantation, LLC, Track 1A, located in District 8, subject to compliance with staff recommendations 1 through 2 and plant revisions 1 through 4. All is recommended by the Iberia Parish Regional Planning Commission. I have a motion by Mr. Gonsolan and a second by Mr. Olivier. Mr. Gonsolan. Mr. Olivier. Wait. No further discussion. Roll call. That motion passes. Summary number 120 introduced by the Regional Planning Commission. A resolution granting preliminary approval to BFI Waste Services LLC for a 24.718 acre tract located at 614 Koto Road, located in District 14, subject to compliance with staff recommendations 1 through 6 and plant revisions one through eight, and all is recommended by the Iberia Parish Regional Planning Commission. I have a motion by Mr. Pollard, a second by Mr. Napier. Mr. Pollard. Uh, yes, I'll wave. wave I'm okay. Uh, Mr. Napier. Uh, Sheriff, uh, crossed and dialed. Mm -hmm. Everything's good on this one? Yes, everything's good. You got no, I just, I, I just wanted to make sure you were on board with it, and it's. It, I mean, looking at it, it looks looks like you did your homework on it. And yeah, everything's good. The only thing that they're doing is they're carving out. Um, Gordon's Disposal LLC owns quite a bit of property right there, and they're selling the existing waste transfer station, and so they've got to carve out the piece of property that the station sits, excuse me, sits on in order to sell it to BFI. So that's the only thing. So it's doing. just that area, right there. It's just that, yeah. It's the only. It's the area that has the buildings and the pond is on there. Also. Right. Right. Okay. Good. Thank you. I just I want to make sure you're on board. Okay. Thank you, Miss Sarah. No further discussions. Roll call. And that motion passes. Um, before we do any type of adjournment, we're going to go to the expansion that we have um, for the Parish Council. Item number one. Item number one, dismiss and consider a motion to expand the agenda to discuss and consider the following items. Summary number 121, introduced by the Parish President, a resolution <coughs> amending the 2019 Solid Waste Sales Tax Fund Budget in the amount of 50000 to appropriate funding for the cleanup of storm debris as a result of Hurricane Barry and additional expenditures of landfill ought to be funded from the fund balance previous years. The purpose of this expansion is to provide an appropriation to fund said expenditures to begin the cleanup of storm debris as a result of Hurricane Barry. Um, so. I need a motion and a second to go into public hearing. I have a motion by Michael Landry, a second by Mr. Brown. Roll call. Okay, motion passes. We're now in public hearing. Um, let's see, we need a, a motion and a second to go into public comments. I have a motion by Ms. Bruce. No. Oh. Public comments. Okay. Um, is there anybody in the audience who would like to uh, discuss anything uh, on this funding uh, change to pick up all the debris in the parish? Uh, seeing none, um, we go now. I have motion and a second to go back into regular session. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gosselin. Roll call. Just push it. That motion passes. We're back in regular session. Now we're going to ex uh, vote on a motion to expand the agenda. 
So I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gonsolin. Roll call. Joe, Eugene, Eugene. Okay, that motion passes. Now we're gonna take a motion and second to suspend the rules as this item did not go to the Finance Committee. I have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gonsolin. Roll call. One, okay, that motion passes. Finally, we get to it. Motions and vote on item summary number 121 introduced by the Paris president a resolution amending the 2019 solid weight sales tax fund budget in the amount of 50,000 to appropriate funding for the cleanup of storm debris as a result of Hurricane Barry and additional expenditures of landfill all to be funded from the fund balance previous years. Just for the people in the audience, this was something that uh, the administration and Mr. Richard have been working hard on to get and um, so we're expanding the agenda, suspending the rules so that we can start this on Monday morning. So, um, and this is something really needed. Mr. Gonsalam? Didn't the past president ask for an extra line item? Should we state that or are you? Okay, well, I was knowing the expansion, they didn't have it, but okay, just as long as you're okay with it. Yeah, as long as we're okay with it, that's fine. We're certainly gonna put it in a different line item, so we can monitor it. All right, I'm good then. And, right. I was just following up on your request. And 50000 was decided um, because we probably won't need that much and the, the leftover will be moved back into solid waste. So um, is anybody have any uh, questions up here? Mr. Brown? No. Mr. Napier? Okay, seeing no further hey. discussion. Oh, I'll make the motion first. Mr. Landry. No. Oh. I made the motion and Ricky seconded. Okay, we have a motion by Ms. Broussard, a second by Mr. Gonsalam. Now go to discussion. Discussion. Ms. Broussard, do you have any comments? Yes, I do. Uh, I just want to uh, commend Larry and, and your administration. Um, I know that y'all have been working very hard since the storm to um, recover, to help our very parish recover. Uh, then we thanked you earlier for the work during the storm, and, and that didn't end after. and. Uh, I know we had contracts in place for debris removal, and this is going to be a lot cheaper than if um, we were to have to rely on those contracts. So uh, just kudos to you for be going out there and getting um, a better deal for us and uh, getting it to where we can actually start the cleanup uh, so soon after the storm. I, I know people are anxious to get all of that picked up and get back to normal. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, Mr. Gonsalam. Oh, I'm good. Mr. Trong? I'm good. No further discussion? Oh, let's see, Andy. Yeah, I, I'd like for you to amend that motion to author, also authorize the parish president to <coughs> sign any necessary amendment to the solid waste contract uh, because that's basically what you're doing is you're amending it for the special circumstance okay. to allow them to pick it up at that uh, re reduced price. Uh, okay. So it, it, it will probably take a written agreement to, to do that. Okay. Um, Especially. We, so we are uh, in agreement to uh, make a slight adjustment to the, um, with the first and the second. No further discussion. Roll call. That motion passes. I have a motion to adjourn. We'll take a five minute break.